Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 10 of Podcast of Five Rings, your source of enlightenment in the realm of video games, tabletop, anime, film, and tech. Each episode of Podcast of Five Rings releases Monday mornings on iTunes and SoundCloud, and now topic by topic, day by day on YouTube, with the full video releasing on Friday. To catch updates about the podcast or for other news, give us a follow on your social media platform of choice listed in the description below. I'm your host, GM, and overseer of Podcast of Five Rings, Obsidian. Joined today by the wall that will not fall, Tetsuo. The wall is not Caddy Wampus. You said it for me today. Yep, gotta knock it out early. <laughs> That's good because I forgot about it completely. <laughs> it is, I just wasn't going to bring up the catchphrase at all. We got the resonant wildcard, Mal. Hello, everyone. How's Mal doing today? Oh, same old, same old. Did you beat Prey yet? No, I lost some progress, so I went and started a new video game. Did you actually <laughs> lose your save file, or are you just joking? No, I just lost <laughs> hours of it, so it disincentivizes me to keep going. Did you just forget to save, or did it actually replaying on no, PC or PS4? I, I'm on PS4, and it like it sent an, a key item of uh, to progress um, through the wall, basically. Wow. And I had to... I had to go back to a manual save from hours ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. That I will say that is one thing I've noticed about the game uh, before we get into any of our topics for the day. Just that it does seem to have a lot of things falling through walls. Because I had that happen with enemies, oddly enough. But Yeah, I haven't had it happen on anything else. Just that. Well, that explains... I was able to... Go ahead, Tets. I was just going to say that I was able to uh, throw a uh, nightmare through a wall which happened to also be one of the loading screen walls, so I don't know what happened to him. Uh. <laughs> well, that explains why the speedrun is 10 minutes long if everything's literally going through a wall. Because uh-huh. that's what the speedrun was. I mean, I watched yeah. it, and it was literally the guy just clips through a wall, zips off through space. And basically yeah, gets I know the, the glue game. gun will let you... There's a glue gun exploit that'll let you go through things that I thought about just using. Yeah, he's glue gunning up into the corner and then just, like, basically clipping through the wall. Yep. We are also not joined this week by Meta, who is out sick today. He's been struck low by a plague. Yep. Good thoughts his way. He's had a rough few weeks here with getting sick and some other family stuff, so hopefully he'll be back with us next week when we get back to the mechanics of his favorite clan, the Crane. (laughs) How else am I supposed to get my typos if uh, we don't have a Meta around? (laughs) No one's going to understand that reference at all. (laughs) So many typos. All right, let's get right into the L5R stuff then. This week from FFG, we got a a fiction, their first fiction, titled Her Father's Daughter. This is in reference to the Crane Clan, the focus of the articles that FFG is running out in these next few weeks. And I guess we'll, we'll move on to another clan after that. Maybe the Crab. Maybe yeah, we'll go backwards. Like I think there, I mean, there was a, one of the original boxes had it ordered cra- uh, crane, then crab, and then I think the, like, even alphabetical after that, weirdly. Really? So I don't know if someone messed up or what. <laughs> Somebody messed up and everybody else has just been going off of it since then. Eh, right. whatever. Powder blue's better than dark blue anyways. Says you. <laughs> yep, says me. <laughs> this fiction was written by David Latterout who many people probably recognize as a former AG employee. Uh, he used to be the brand manager of the game and a writer for some of the RPG books, especially the 4th edition ones. I don't think he did any of the 3rd edition ones, but I could be wrong. And I know he Hopefully. was the head GM for Winter Court 3 and 4 at, oh. at the very least. He may have been involved with the old ones too. Hopefully they are now paying all their writers, or well, they're paying all the writers, unlike the volunteers that made up a lot of AEGs. Well, yeah, the AG people got cards and stuff, but... Maybe they'll get product, too. I don't know how FFG does it. But anyways... I mean, hopefully they pay them actual money. Yeah, sure. uh, Fantasy Flight. Sure. So yeah, this the fiction this week was focusing on the Crane Clan and their champion, Doji Hotaru. So kind of a semi-introduction to the flavor of the Crane Clan through the fiction. So the fiction starts off with Dadoji Narishima. He is part of an escort that is leading the Crane's taxes back to the capital city, Toshirombo. And a skirmish breaks out between the Crane Clan and some Ronin, led by former Dragon Samurai. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, yeah, it's not Toshi Rambo, it's uh, uh, Otosan Uchi. Otosan Uchi, sorry. Yeah. 
So, so, the uh, Rambo does make a uh, mention in uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, city yeah. being fought. I'm, I'm just now used to it being the new capital. They're heading to Otisanuchi to deliver taxes. The current clan champion is traveling amongst them, Doji Hodoru. She comes out, uh, she gets in basically a duel with this uh, Ronin former dragon. Yeah, because they are being attacked by peasants. Yep, he is leading peasants against them because the peasants in this region are starving. They have no food. Crane lands are in bad shape, apparently. Yeah, from the tsunami. Well, I assume this is through their lands. Yeah, I, I think it. Yeah. I think it was implied that that the peasants specifically attacked them. They were the peasants in the area, so it's. I think it's just a matter of whoever would have came through would have gotten robbed, regardless. Their caravan is attacked. Hodoru kills the the Ronin leader, and they go about on their ways. And Narashim is kind of surprised to see that the champion is traveling with them. Which kind of sets up the second half of the arc when you find out that Hodori was trying to basically get into the capital city before anyone knew she was there because her father, the Emerald Champion, Doji Satsume, has been has died. And there's a bit of mystery going on. Some of the Emerald Magistrates are investigating the former Emerald Champion's death. He basically died under mysterious circumstances. They just found him dead. So when we shift the scene to Otosanuchi. Hodoru is visiting her younger sister, Shizue, and they basically talk about their father for a, for a little bit. And then Kachiko enters, Baishi Kachiko, who is also Hodoru's lover. And they kind of... They, 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 care, they share some dialogue after Shizue leaves. And basically, Hodoru kind of starts to suspect that the Scorpion could possibly be involved with her father's death somehow. <laughs> So that's basically the fiction. It was pretty short. 11 yeah. pages. Yeah, but it, it did a nice job of kind of introducing the Crane care about politics. They're very art-focused. Yeah, it goes, it shows her, she's looking at uh, some flowers. and Yeah, Ikebana arrangements. She compares the gardens of Otis and Uchi to those of Kudan Doji. Now the colors in Otis and Uchi are... Wouldn't be no noticed by normal samurai, but they're slightly off, unlike the pristine gardens of Kudan Doji. So kind yeah, of setting up this thing about perfection. That. What are you saying, Ted? Sorry. Just kind of the way that they worded that was, was kind of interesting to me. Yeah, so it distinguishes the crane as someone who pays attention to these kind of minute details when it comes to art and the presentation of things. They're all about perfection. I think the fiction did a really good job of that. Yeah. Right. Um, so I guess back at the start, how do you feel about, or what do you think it shows as far as Hodoru's abilities, or not abilities, but her traveling in secret with a caravan and then um, accepting it. Basically, then they get in a fight and she uh, they she accepts this duel with the uh, Nitin trained when uh, tells no one else to help her. It kind of, I think it's referenced later when Shizue basically says, sneaking into the city like this isn't something that your father would have done. He would have, you know, just came in. Yeah, he would have made his presence known, but you're not really like him, are you, Hodoru? So it's kind of like when she says that, it makes you think back to how she acted at the caravan a little bit. That was that right. was a nice little detail, I thought, because Sansame probably the... would he would have just let everyone know that he was traveling right. through the lands. He wouldn't have done so in secret. And her kind of like stepping forth and doing that, I think, was a little bit of showing how she was different than Sansame. Right? You think? I mean, you think it's naive on her part? Or especially the um, well, yeah, I, I mean, the accepting does. of a duel and not letting anyone help the current C crane champion. Like you think the crane champion should put more value on her life? Well, than, yeah, it's risky, right? Just dueling it's, some random samurai. Or she does Ronin. say though that that like she appreciated what the Ronin was doing for the peasants, like that he was right. putting them first. And even though she couldn't necessarily, where because of where she is in the celestial order, he was able to because of what his current position as Ronin was. And so therefore she specifically chose that right. path to take to, uh, I mean, allow him so, to die a samurai death. Yeah, it, to give shows him a her, death. it shows her current um, values, I guess that, yeah. She valued this one person's honorable death over possibly, you know, she could have screwed over the crane immensely by dying, having two crane champions die shortly back to back. Yeah. Probably I, not very good for them. Naive with a touch of idealism is how I yeah. like to how I like to describe her. And and again, this is reflected later on in her scene with Kachiko because oh, she, yeah. you can tell she wants to trust her lover. But at the same time, she has strong suspicions that her brother Hametsu 
a master of po poison in the daimyo of the Shosuro family, could be the one behind her father's murder. I hope they're they kind of red herring with the scorpion a bit. Oh, um, I agree. I think that they'll probably set it up due to the like because uh, it's good conflict and whatnot. Kachiko, will, something will happen to where uh, and betray Hodoru somehow. Yeah, that's I'm just the, that's the obvious of, one, like, right? Yeah. I hope it's like maybe they know who did it and are keeping it for reasons they feel is or more superior or whatever. You know, yeah. like they have the right reason, obviously, and not the fact that they just actually killed him. I'm with you there, yeah. but I because, feel I feel like they might keep with it, though, just to kind of introduce how the Scorpion operate like that would be a decent way to do it. Well, again, I mean, like what I was going to say, keeping though, a major secret still. Sure. Yeah, because I, I think I think the biggest thing about the Scorpion is that it's it's duplicity upon duplicity upon duplicity. And so if it's the one that everybody expects of, oh, the scorpion did it, that's so shallow compared to well, scorpion that, work, I That's guess. us expecting versus in-universe expecting. Well, right, right, right. But, it, but I mean, like, to a degree... Uh, you can only, like, outwit people in that. real life so much. No, no, agree. But, 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 but that's what I'm saying, is that maybe it's something else than what we initially think it is. Right. Um, for that reason, I'm not saying to to do the yeah, whole scorpion. But you can't where say, constantly... Yeah, it's hard to like justify the scorpion as existing based upon only doing what people don't expect, because then like even that gets expected. Then yeah, exactly, exactly. So that and that's that's just what I'm saying. Like maybe it's just one step further than that. Not not necessarily again, not shadows upon shadows and mirrors and mirrors, but just by doing it one more time than we expect, it still sets that tone of okay, that's something the scorpion is capable of. But it's not all that they are. And maybe we'll I find out more when we see their oh, yeah. their uh, fiction, because I bet it'll be revolving around either Shoju or Kachiko, more than likely. Maybe both of I, them. And then we'll probably imagine, learn more, maybe. I'd imagine it's all going to be the champions for the first yeah. one. Because you can tell oh, yeah. Kachiko definitely knows something, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the cha uh, Hodoru definitely showed enough presence of mind to turn down her offer of help. Like, even as infatuated as she is. I yeah. do like that she is still kind of willing to put her her duty beyond kind of what her heart says. I, this gets into the first thing I kind of like about the fiction. You know, Katrina mentioned in the live stream last week that a lot of their storytelling they wanted to tell was going to be about the samurai versus themselves, kind of their mm -hmm. their strict code that they have to follow versus what they actually want. This was like a decent reflection of that, I thought, because, yeah. like I said, end of the part where Honor demands that she has to avenge her father. But she doesn't really want to because she blames Satsume for the death of her mother. Right. right? They definitely set up a lot of conflict in this one too. And if it ends up being her lover uh, has some role in it, then she has to be like, "Well, I don't really care about my dad, but honor dictates I should." And Kuanon has already made these bold proclamations in front of witnesses, saying whoever did this is going to pay in blood. Right. So now she's basically. Yeah honor bound to to see that through or she's going to yeah. cause her clan to lose face right so that was nice also what Tets kind of touched on earlier she knew basically that the ronin wasn't acting dishonorably necessarily by wanting to help the peasants so she kind of had that kind of inner dialogue with herself about that but she yeah, knew she... that 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 it was against the law so it was obviously her duty to see that he was executed yeah, she also had the, uh, she, at some point she um, reflects on all the different troubles, at least concerning her clan and how it connects yeah. to the various other clans. Like um, they can't help the crab on the wall right. while they're being the, besieged. You know, lion fighting. Although the only, I saw some people were like, oh, well, she, I guess she has, she literally cared zero about the unicorn or uh, Phoenix because they're not mentioned in that. Yeah, there could just well, be nothing going on with them right now. Right. There really isn't much conflict between the crane and the phoenix or the unicorn well, yeah, i mean it was also partly that they just weren't mentioned like the other clans were in the first fiction yeah well right but but i mean yeah. all of those clans at one point or another were something that was traditionally crane uh conflict i don't know that i ever really remember time when they did do too terribly much with the phoenix or the unicorn in the clan war they were pretty buddy buddy with the phoenix but the subtle thing i like about that one section of the of the fiction is another way it kind of introduces some crane themes and kind of how they operate she was concerned about how she couldn't be an ally to the other clans because a lot of the cranes mo in court is to offer favors and be a friend to right. people who need help and then to get them to owe them something but they literally couldn't they didn't have the the uh 
again the tidal wave has, or yeah, they, tsunami. They don't have the men or the resources to to help these clans in their time of need. The normally opulent uh, Crane clan is on rough times and and now has a new leader that might not you know have any idea of how to fix that. That was the good stuff. The one thing I really didn't like and kind of bothered me was that the whole skeleton, I guess, of how the conflicts are being set up is really samey to me. Because FFG said a lot difference? of... Yeah, FFG's... I want to say this first. It's only the first fiction. Yeah. Stuff could drastically change from here. This is literally just my impression of the first thing. But FFG said a lot about how things would be same, but they'd be it'd be the same characters and like situations that we kind of know, but different. I like mean, they go that, in different directions. And again, this right. is just an establishing thing, but I've liked to see a little bit more about how Hodori was different from Hodori. We got a well, little bit of like the crane situation with the tsunami. Right. But I, I just wanted to see a little more, I guess. She doesn't really have any reason to be different that much, at least at this point, from Hodori. Yeah. Sure, they, sure. They've lived the same life up until this point. Although... I guess I saw someone saying that she might actually end up being more lonely overall, which may <laughs> be a better um, yeah. uh, one more thing that drove her to uh, Kochiko. Uh, Kochiko. Because, or Kochiko, uh, because I can't remember. I guess uh, there was another doji that ended up being like a surrogate father to Hodori. But probably, yeah, that's Toshimoko. Oh, to- Toshimoko. Yeah, because uh, yeah, he, uh, he she, was that, technically... They probably didn't have the same relationship. Uh, they kind of implied or at least that she's around toshimoko a lot because she gets a lot I mean, of personal she training was from being, him. no she was being trained by her father well toshimoko was there and she mentions him as yeah, her she sensei mentions that toshimoko is her sensei her dad was just there for that scene because it says like toshimoko is about to say something and then her dad jumps in mm-hmm. instead yeah um, so basically hodori and toshimoko and the ag lore they would often go out and womanize together Right. Yeah. So that, so that, that yeah, she's not her getting Yeah, she's not really a philanderer relationship. She's more right. personal. So that's one thing I like about her being different, but it's also Was but she's still tied to Kachiko to... though. It could have yeah. been any other woman or any other man. I have a feeling well, that her husband's up. probably from the Fox clan since he's going <laughs> he's going to talk to uh oh, yeah. Tomo. He's probably Yoritomo going to be a Fox spirit. One of the big, one of the big things people liked. Yeah, I think that was what yeah, I think that's what a lot of people like the most. Uh, that was another <laughs> little difference that I appreciated too, was that the Yoritomo were actually raiding the crane clan because in the yeah, clan war, they were pirate. allies. They were basically mercenaries who were, who basically yeah. helped defend the crane land with crane gold. Yeah. I've seen a lot of speculation on because he's just some pirate, I guess. And, or at least from, as she put it and not already a minor clan, which they would have been at this point. Maybe his entire goal now is just to become a minor clan and not a great clan. That would probably <laughs> piss be. off a lot maybe, of people. Maybe he just likes being a pirate. I mean, I yeah. don't know. Um, maybe he wants to be a bandit lord. We'll see, I guess, but... but yeah, I think they're going to keep it a very similar um, story for the first bit, for like new people and... And for, for comfort for can the... really world. happen in these fictions, because... They've already got a fiction that probably insert that's going to be a brief overview of all of this in the main game. It just feels a bit, I mean, it feels sort of pandering to me a little bit. They're walking a fine line because yeah. I've seen already, I've seen complaints on both sides that it's too samey and too different. Or like, you know, they, people are people want it to be the same and people want it to be different on yeah. different sides. Well, I know you, you two were base. You basically like weren't. You, don't, don't you know guys anything. don't know a whole lot about like the clan war setting, right? Yeah, uh, the little no, I've read, I haven't I, retained much of. I, I, actually, the clan war is the one area that I know the most. Of. Okay, well there you go. <laughs> because because the books, the um, fiction books that came out chronicled the um, yep. clan wars. Yep. So that's that's actually most of most of where my knowledge lies you know, as far as L five R history goes up until Ivory, anyway. Yeah. Um. But. Uh, so, oh, no, like, I think part of it, too, is it really does need to be not not the same, but I feel like it does need to be at least a little more samey than what their ultimate goal of difference is going to be, if that makes sense. And, and because it because there's so much difference of the mechanics to the card game, they need something that's going to uh, be a bit of a familiar safety blanket, so to say, to the old players of the uh, IP. Yeah, I think. I think I'm just speaking. So as long as it's similar enough you know yeah i think i'm just speaking from like the zeitgeist of the end of the ag era when basically the game was huge like right when the ccg came out and it just declined over time 
So I think they're yeah. wanting to appeal to like the old boy kind of the people who I think over glorify the clan war era and like hold it up on this pedestal. Yeah. And like, I mean, I love the clan war era and all those personalities, but cause I was introduced to L5R through the RPG and it was through a campaign set in the clan war. So you know, I, I hold a lot of nostalgia for that era and for those characters. It seems kind of like a transparent appeal to kind of grab people like me who have a nostalgia for that era. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, yeah, that's that's exactly what I was meaning. Like, like okay, it's, cool. Yeah, it's, it's they I, have I, the luxury I, of drawing on successes of the last 20 years by reading sure, it, too. Sure. Whereas AEG, it would have been weird for them to go back, right? Yeah, definitely. It makes also, more sense. Uh, even the, the story owner. prizes could drastically change. I mean, I, I think they that's... they're not going to be as into it as AEG was, right? But yeah. everyone's already assuming that the Emerald Champion is going to be the first prize. And so. that could be somewhere that it, it deviates. A lot of these probably early fictions aren't really going to like completely, like I'm not going to completely moon over them. Probably because they're going to be yeah. probably a lot of, here's the same characters we kind of have. It's the people so, you know. We're going to hint at maybe different things to come, but not give it to you. But then once the game comes out, those. it'll probably start deviating more. That's yeah. what I'm hoping. But I'm yeah. still kind of tepid right now. I'm a um, bit lukewarm on the fiction. Of if it. they do end up doing ones based on the clan champions, who are complete? Isn't the unicorn's a completely different person, right? Or yes. suppose, or Sh- as far Shinjo as Alternasa. Right. Not even like a, a a different version of someone, but the lion champion is also like someone who wasn't alive at the original one or at when it started i think or something so i can't, I guess we'll I can't to... remember if he was card or not i don't think he was no yeah. i think he, so I think he I was imagine... actually dead when it started yes yeah, so. right so i i mean i assume the lion story will be him interacting with yeah. uh i just hope he doesn't face? die because satsume died too and it drove a lot of the plot forward and the, the clan war. Can... yeah totally yeah. so i hope that rso doesn't die at toshi rombo again i hope Maybe we'll get a little bit different stuff if Yakumo and Hitomi still have a rivalry. Maybe we'll yeah, see some different did, uh, stuff there. I hope the Phoenix don't just. Die? I think he was killed in the in the Scorpion Clan coup by oh, Shoju. No, okay. no he I th- he died sometime in. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he did get. Yeah, he was dueling Shoju and died, and then that's why Hitori mm-hmm. leads the charge and kills Dairu. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, we already have his death triggering off something like possibly different stuff, I guess, depending on where they go with it. Yeah. Um, he's already dead before the, Inception. There, apparently, according to the wiki, there's different accounts of how Satsumi died. He was either severely yeah. wounded by a scorpion in the belly during the third day of the scorpion coup or assassinated by in a sleep by Agent Sakachiko. Yeah, that's kind of why I'm hoping that Scorpion don't actually weren't the ones who were directly a, uh, and that, the reason. Yeah, and that would be a nice deviation that I like. I also right. don't think that regardless of what happens, and even if the Scorpion do plan a coup, I don't think anyone's getting exiled. I don't think that'll be a punishment we really ever see because, like... You don't want to alienate set. some of the fan base, right? right? And they're already in the core set, and so... Mm-hmm. They weren't like an add-on. Whereas before, right. the, the coup was kind of like... I, I believe it was part of the backstory. They just eventually did a set about it. Uh, they yeah. had some of the Scorpion personalities. Scorpion weren't playable yeah, know, right when the game started. Or, yeah, I knew I know that much that Scorpion weren't originally playable. Yeah, that's one thing that I hope they deviate from. And maybe it would kind of give Hotaru's and Kachiko's relationship a different dynamic. Because it's already going to be kind of different, right? She's a bit more innocent and naive than Hotaru is. Yeah, he's more the womanizer, kind of devil may care guy. It comes across like she's kind of getting, she could easily be getting played by Kachiko. That's something else I'd like to see too, maybe. Yeah. To kind of establish I mean, maybe, Kachiko as this puppet master kind of Right, maybe she was woman. ordered to get close to Hodoru. By her and, husband. Or, it could be. Right. That would be a cool twist, right? And maybe then she fell for her because, you know, that's twists something else you could do. Well, but, but I mean, that's that in and of itself is exactly what happened, though, because she did get close to Hattori initially because Shoju told her to. And then mm. she fell in love with Hattori. They played their little cat and mouse, hand each other stones games and yep. stuff. So, again, I'm a bit tepidly optimistic, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I like it, but I don't have any of the connection like you do. Yeah, I, I, I like the fiction itself. Yeah. I just want. I think, I, I'm looking more forward to how it's different because yeah, that's going to really prove. That's going to prove to me why they thought it was a good idea to go back in the first place, right? Because yeah. well, other, otherwise, why go back in the first place if you're not trying to appeal to people's popular. nostalgia? Yeah. 
Oh so. yeah, they, that's definitely part of it. Also, it lets them be about samurai, right? It lets them wipe away all the other enemies. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you could have done that with like a time anymore. skip, right? Eh, I mean, unless you have some resolution, the lying darkness and the or and the nothing and all that are still there. You still have the colonies. You still have even go back before people. that. They this is just that. an easier way, and it, but it gives something people know. Like, yeah, it, it gives the player base something to latch on to for the people returning. Yeah, no, I, it just still feels transparent to me. I don't know. I mean, I'm it kind of it. I think yeah. that's the point, though. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, if people can see it, then it should turn them off. Like, Why? it does me a little bit. I mean, like, if they're if you can see the FFG, like, the main reason they want to do it is just to get people to buy it because they love the clan war. I mean, Instead well, of them wanting probably, to tell a different story. They probably look at it and go, this is, like, probably the best... They probably weighed the different options and said this yeah. one has the most pros. That is definitely a big pro, though, is, like, appealing well, to nostalgia. And, you said, and here's, here's say all the, the time, thing. you're like, you have a hard-on for nostalgia. Well, so, and, and here's the other thing, at least for me, it, the way I feel is it, there's this aspect of, wow, FFG looked into it, and they're listening to the players who are saying, we love the Clan War era. So even though it does feel pandering, it also feels like they're kind of setting the base a little bit for, okay, we're going to see what the players like, and we're going to play into what the players like, if that makes sense. You also have to understand that companies just exist to make money. Yeah, right. that's it. Oh, like, there's, no, there's no reason for them to exist other than that, basically. If they I'd, can't make money, they can't exist. I'd appreciate if they lie to me a little bit when they try to get the money out of my wallet, though. Uh, I maybe prefer I'm, more maybe honesty. I'm different. Maybe I don't I'm really different. care about pandering as long as you're honest about it. Yeah. I mean... Because, well, uh, so be honest about it or be really, really well in the shadows about it. Don't don't half-ass your lying. I think it's maybe my maybe more the thing for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, just I just want to. I just want to see how it differs. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, don't don't tell me the same story over again with slightly different characters. Yeah. I want to see it take we, a hard left turn. Will. I think it's gonna be a. It might be a slow like get everyone acclimated and then ramp it up though. And I I, I hope you're right, Mel. I really hope you're right. I yeah, just telling the same story is just kind of bad. Yeah. I'm just I'm just going. being I'm just being honest and putting my trepidation out there. Yeah. 